I hope uh, everyone is doing well. This is Jyotsna. I'm media representative at Frankist Media. I'll welcome you all to the second iteration of Pragati E Vichar Literature Festival 2023, and which is organized by Frankist Media. And this year's theme is Taking Humanity Forward. So the PVL 2023 20 uh, 23rd, uh, it's it's the main objective to spread the affection for the literature and address the various subject matters that come under this year's theme, which is taking humanity forward. So I welcome you all, and it's immense honor to have you both of you on board today today for the PVL session. So today we will be discussing storytelling, which is a session theme, and our session topic is. where does science become fiction and fiction becomes fantasy so welcome ashok sir welcome women sir thank you thank, thank you jyotsna so i'll start with the introduction first with uh, women nath so women nath is an uh, astrophysicist at the raman research institute he was born in assam and after initial schooling there he studied in delhi university and then received his phd in university uh, of maryland usa His research interest includes the evolution of galaxies and interaction of galaxies with diffuse gas in the universe. His interest in popularization of science and has published several books and articles in Bengali and English. He has recently his uh, book Solar System in Words, which is published by Neogi Books, and this is for the children book, right, sir? Yes. Yes. I like it. Children you. and adults. Could you please share something about your book, which uh, what is all about to the audience? Okay, this is uh, as the uh, title uh, uh, says. It's about solar system. Right. Um, all the uh, components of the solar system, starting from the sun, all the planets um, and comets, asteroids, and it's all about also about uh, the origin of the solar system, whether there are other planetary systems around other stars. what we know uh, these are the basically the and, and where uh, is solar system located in the whole universe mm -hmm. but i uh, it, it's not about information giving information to the children you know which they will get from textbooks which it's not my purpose and which makes it very prosaic so since it's in verse i wanted to basically talk about concepts and the questions and especially the open questions because i think it's very important for children to know that there are open questions and the science is a revolving thing it's it's not just done away with you know in books and that you have to just learn mug up and 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 you know, prepare for exams it's something they should look forward to addressing when they grow up and if they see that so the in almost every chapter there are open questions as of now um the things that we don't understand even about our solar system there are amazing things that we don't understand so i just wanted to convey that so uh, this book is specifically for children right well it's not specifically for children as i told you and um i have been talking about it to my colleagues and you know a um, lot of things actually uh, are uh, not really known to specialists who work on other uh, fields of science uh, uh, in astrophysics even in astronomers Okay. they have found some of the things in my book very uh, surprising oh for example neptune neptune is an enigma even now okay. so when i tell this to my students and my colleagues and they so it's not about just children so which is why i say it's 8 plus so 8 and above <laughs> yeah anybody even 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 researchers would find it uh, may find something you know uh, interesting there Okay, thank you so much. So moving forward, um, we it's an illustrated book. Sorry to, uh, I, I should have mentioned that it has okay. been illustrated. Thank you so much. So moving ahead, we have Mr. Ashok Raja Gopalan in the panel today. So Mr. Ash Ashok Raja Gopalan is an Indian writer and artist for over four ah five hundred children books. He first began illustrating children's stories with a piece in the nineteen eighty ah nine magazine Junior Quest. and he believes that anyone can can who wants to write and draw uh, can do that and he lives in a sleepy suburb of chennai with his family and books he has pub, uh, he has published recently six books under the adventure of gulgul series with the talking cub it's a children's imprint of speaking tiger and they are very hilarious and age group for men for the 8 and above which is uh, also illustrated by ashok 
himself so sir i would like to know about this series and uh, yeah please tell, tell to the audience what is it all about your book your series the bulbul series thank you ma'am uh, this is a series of six books uh, the adventures of gulgul there are six books in the series um not strictly science fiction since uh, bhiman ji is here i'd be very careful in saying they are not strictly science fiction they are space fantasies uh, uh, i think that will be the closest genre where this little girl go- goes to a different planet or a, a galaxy in each book she goes to a different uh, place and she meets these strange and exotic animals in each planet she visits and that you can't escape science so there would be bits and pieces of science in it like um, su- suppose half a planet is half the planet is land and half the planet is water is it an island in a lake which is on a an island in a lake on an island i mean like that uh, she ask questions or uh, uh, like why do stars twinkle so there'll be these little snippets but on the whole it's not science fiction it's space fantasy and it's for 8 year old children and the my uh, the storyline is an excuse for humor they are funny stories so th- that is the main aim of the book uh, of these books to make them laugh thank you so much ashok sir so since uh, our topic is where does science become fiction and fiction becomes fantasy so what uh, what do you, what is uh, mean by according to the what is the meaning of this sentence in your opinion since you are a, uh, you have written so many books on uh, you know astronomy and, and recently you have written uh, something on solar system so bimanan what's your thought on this what do you think like this line what is the meaning of this line according to you oh uh, when the science become fiction and fiction become fantasy Yeah. um trying to understand the theme uh, i mean um you know science is it written yesterday science has become science fiction uh in some way yes uh, some of the things that have been uh, discussed in science fiction of uh, in the past is now common place material now uh but when you ask when the science become fiction and fiction become fantasy let Let me address the last question first: the fiction and fantasy. I would draw uh, a line between fiction and fantasy, and I think uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Rajagopalan has uh, said it correctly: that fantasy is a is, is a subgenre of uh, fiction, where uh, you, I mean, the flights of fantasy takes beyond science. I mean, you do entertain. Uh, supernatural things maybe unrealistic slightly unrealistic thing but there will be sense of reality there also mm-hmm. but on the whole uh you probably try to break the shackles of what is possible in the realm of science uh so that's fantasy so i uh, when does fiction become fantasy um uh, well i mean when we entertain such thoughts i suppose but and when you say science become fiction that is a very nuanced thing uh in many ways science can become a part of fiction uh in not only in science fiction uh if one can talk about the lives of scientists okay. uh, um, you know that can that there are not many fiction uh with that theme which is a pity uh but that can be a uh, that can be a part of uh, a theme of fiction also and then a science uh will be a part of that um uh in a broader sense i don't think much about uh, the the difference between uh, as a scientist and a fiction writer for example mm-hmm. so i have also written fiction as a scientist we we try to uh connect the dots in nature and in fiction also you have a narrative in science we also looking for a narrative 
So in that way, there are um, many common grounds between science and fiction. I mean, we are looking for narrative. When we do some research, it's not just we do something as, as a disjointed, a disconnected factors, right? It's a part of uh, ongoing questions that people have been asking about mechanisms of nature, to, for example. So there is a narrative in science, um, and there can be science in fiction also. Okay. Um, Thank just you. Just my thoughts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So over to Ashok, sir. What do you think in this context? Yes, I'm glad the question was primarily directed towards Bhimanji. You know, it's a very difficult question, like uh, like questions. <laughs> um, when does science become fiction and when does uh, science fiction become fiction becomes uh, fantasy? Okay, so it is the I, 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 my take. So uh, uh, it's the degree of realism. So how much you move away from realism, science is like almost 90% real. In the sense that uh, I, I think scientists would say that as far as we know, with the technology available, this is what we know. I don't think it's like 100%. I don't know, uh, really, uh, not being a scientist. So science is like uh, about so much right and real. Science fiction take some liberties, some percentage of fiction enters science. So that becomes science fiction. And when you use, uh, uh, I mean, uh, you know, for example, uh, uh, example, there is, uh, there are these Western uh, movies where uh, cowboys and so somebody walks into a saloon and then takes out a, a, a coin, I don't know what, a silver or something and places that on the counter and orders uh, a bottle of whatever he wants to drink. Suppose we move uh, this to a space settlement in a distant planet. And so uh, somebody walks in uh, and uh, orders some exotic alien drink from uh, an alien. So this is not pure science fiction. This is science fantasy where you it's the same kind of storyline. You just use um, elements from the future, or uh, just it, like uh, not real sex. I mean, it's a, but uh, from uh, what I re read from Arthur C. Clarke and Isaac Asimov, there'll be a uh, lot of signs in the fiction. Uh, as as a child, I used to learn uh, things in science from that fiction, and uh, when you speak about science fiction, it's usually hard science, like physics and chemistry and biology. But there are other sciences, which is there in almost any book, but you don't call it science fiction. Sociology or psychology are also sciences, but that's not called science fiction, usually. Hmm. Thank you, Ashok, sir. So since um, this session is about storytelling, my next question is, how can storytelling be applied to research, development, and innovative projects. So I would like to start with women, sir. Well, I think it's um, it has become a sort of a buzzword now to talk about, you know, the storytelling in research. We see, as I, I was just saying some time ago, uh, what we do in research is to build a narrative uh, of the mechanisms of nature I and mean, how things work. Without the background narrative, any research work is bound to become just piecemeal advancement, disjointed, disconnected from the rest, and end in itself instead of uh, uh, being a mean to some bigger end. So storytelling is important in building a perspective of why and what one is doing in the field of science. And it's very important for students of science as they're entering research if they want to build a perspective. So. Uh, often students are asked to write uh, or communicate, uh, to try to communicate what they've done uh, in a narrative fashion, in a narrative manner. And it's, I think it's important. It's, it's, it, it builds a perspective. So th there is a narrative in science. And if uh, we are aware of that and the students are made aware of that, they would become more, uh, they participate uh, um, uh, 
more wholeheartedly in this because mm -hmm. uh, uh, we are all driven by stories after all. Yeah. You know, that's that's moves us as human beings. Absolutely agree with you. So, Ashok sir, would you like to add something with just uh, Abdulman sir said? Uh, yes. Is it storytelling? Teaching children storytelling or uh, uh, listening to stories or both? Both. You can talk about both things. Listening okay. and writing. Yeah. How can we apply to the story? Because I don't have anything to tell children about storytelling, you know. The ask a child why he or she hasn't done uh, homework or why <laughs> child is late. They are they are full of stories. But before you are a writer, you are a reader, right? So I think uh, someone who uh, who writes first they think of as a reader. Uh, what I think of other. Uh, a writer is also uh, also a reader. So whatever they yes, are, yes, writing, yes. yeah. Okay, okay. I mean, moving away from the topic of science and all that, uh, I think uh, all m m all writers or all good writers are great readers. Right. And that's where they learn. And uh, I and I think like me, other writers too. You know, they'll start reading books like a writer, sort of a passive reader. You know. Like uh, somebody watches movies, they can watch it passively. Or if someone wants to become a movie maker, they'll watch it differently. They learn from the movie. So, uh, uh, so I've learned the writing from reading. So that way, it's very useful for a writer to be a reader, and for a child's creativity and curiosity and all kinds of development. Uh, I mean, there are so many reasons. So I, I'll stick to examples. So one thing is, the child becomes broad-minded. I mean, you can't uh, a child can't always afford to travel everywhere. So and travel broadens the mind. So they uh, the child learns about all kinds of different cultures, and even if it's science fiction, and they learn, you can couch uh, important messages even in science fiction, uh, like racism can be addressed in a. Uh, in a not quite dangerous way. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, you can address major issues if you take it to a different planet or a different setting. So you can do that too. So the uh, I think uh, uh, that way a child uh, through uh, various ways will uh, develop creatively and uh, holistically uh, by reading. You are muted. Okay. Yes, I I didn't hear what you said last. Yeah. I hope they are good things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. So since we are talking about storytelling, so I would like to know how does storytelling influence the holistic development of our children? Me, uh, I'm sorry. I think I answered part of the question. So I, if you could. Answer it in a detailed manner so, like, people know or audience would know more in okay. detail. The holistic uh, development uh, of a children. Development of a child. child. You know, uh, even that, the, so much, so I can only stick to what I know and examples. Um, uh, we ha uh, we ha used to have these community bedtime sessions at home. Now, I have two sons. So, uh, and, and now they're all grown up. So, when they were little, for the little one, a, bed, a bedtime story more suitable to say. But everybody used to listen. For the missus, for my older son, for my older son, we were into Roald Dahl and then Wood House. So, uh, it was a great uh, bedtime session we had. Um, and uh, uh, so, uh, uh, that actually, I hope these memories and that good time, no? Uh, also supposed to scientifically uh, create all kinds of good oxytocin and all kinds of good uh, secretions in the uh, uh, body also. Um, then, uh, and uh, another big example from my life was my favorite author is P.G. Woodhouse. So, it, it's very light fiction. It's very funny. Uh, one direct benefit I got from that is um, I, I, I mostly write humorous stories for children. So I'm a, I'm a funny writer. So that helped directly uh, because I use these books like textbooks. 
and i learned uh, humor i mean learned how to use humor but it also changed my life uh, so i i live in a world mostly you know as far as i can help it but people are good and everything is all right and everything will turn out all right and uh, i take uh, even uh, very serious things also uh, lighter than i most people should so and it, it um, uh, help me deal with the problems that came away you can't escape if all right. problems right. but to help me manage my problem is a direct benefit of reading that is reading woodhouse's uh, stories so i can only give examples sorry i, it's totally I can't cover it uh, exhaustively you muted again and uh, i i was saying that uh, examples are the better way to understand things we rather okay, than going for a like a proper research yeah thank you even that so uh, would you like to add something uh, with whatever ashok sir said address to the audience well i think being a been a chilean writer he has already you know said the uh, important things i mean i if i can just add i think stories are very important they they, they help the children you know to connect the dots of the world in the bits of information that a child gathers every day from the surroundings from in his or her own way uh, it may be a imaginative world but this world building this capability is very important in growing up i think to be able to interact with the world and to find one's place in the world uh that world building capability and I, that, that's where i think the story um telling is very important I mean, otherwise, what one gets to learn are disjointed facts from text textbooks or curriculum, and uh, so stories help a child to connect with the world by building a world of one's own. I, I would think. Thank you. So my next question: What innovative approaches can be introduced to children to augment their curiosity and raise awareness about the world around them, or maybe raise awareness? about science so i would like to start with women so what innovative ways uh, yeah. well, technology has made a lot of things possible now i mean there are uh, audio visual approaches uh, which are uh, at the fingertips now in the you know youtube or internet now which were not available when we were children uh then going to slightly in the future one can uh, think of virtual reality stuff what um, one can these are more innovative stuff but then of course there are this traditional just hands on approaches which exist which may be the best you know i i think the most important thing for a child to become curious about the world uh, around them is to have a sense of wonder the sense of wonder is the most important thing and to to prod that you know even like nature walks those are traditional ways that you know we have uh, or to take its child out and then tell stories and these are, these are traditional ways they are still the best i would think i mean it can be augmented by as you said you know there are more innovative uh, approaches uh, i can't think of hand maybe uh, ashok ji may have some uh, ideas here um uh, uh so uh, i have one question uh, to bimin sir that when you were writing your book the solar system in the wars and it's what you said it's not just specifically for children but above 8 years old so um, what was your approach you know writing your book because you were catering the uh, the whole audience the entire audience which involves the children as well as adults well i'll tell you the genesis of the then you'll probably understand how i wrote it i wrote it for a specific child i wrote a part of it started with 6 years ago um there was a child a, a friend's son uh who was very interested in space you know planets and he would ask me questions so and so as a birthday gift what i thought i would uh, i i made uh, some uh, from handmade paper uh, booklet put some uh, pasted some pictures and wrote a few lines in verse about every planet each planet so i had him in my mind he was like 6 or 7 i think at that time then it basically grew out of that then i thought okay uh, how about extending this i had just written a few lines 
maybe I can write more because there are more things to write. And um, so specifically, I had one child in mind, but I would think this is like representative of all children. So, uh, so that's the approach. I, I mean, I in my mind, I was I had one child, and then you know the uh, thinking that you know he would represent uh, all other children. So that's how I wrote. Thank you so much. So over to you, Ashok, sir. First, we will discuss the innovative approaches that we need to introduce to children to uh, augment their growth and raising awareness around the world. I don't know. As Bhimanji said, mm -hmm. virtual reality, AR and VR seem to be the latest things. But um, um, since I'm not working there, I'm and uh, all kinds of apps you have now. Um, uh, as far as books are concerned, I try to do my own innovation I, um, on a, a tangent, I, you know, uh, but uh, I, I think relevant, uh, um, you know, uh, the styles of illustration, like ca cartoons and that kind of style when it's used as uh, static illustrations in picture books, they are uh, the uh, I think they are the highest form of abstract art. For example, a line like this is a smile, and two lines like this is a reflection in the water. And speed, and uh, I mean, you have various art schools like uh, um, kineticism or futurism, where you show movement by if I wave my hand, I show lots of hands. You know, I show five hands here. It means I wave my hand. The comics do that. And I drew, used that for a book entirely. I was drawing like that. So, you know, these uh, kind of... Uh, a, a child first learns by copying. That's how I learned art or writing in the, in the initial stages. They learn first by copying and then they put their own creativity into it. Uh, so, uh, when you... Uh, I'm uh, not talking about specific innovative things, but when you do innovative things uh, and you use them in storytelling, the child will copy and learn faster and it uh, becomes more fun. Be, uh, uh, child, is, I think that, like I'm happy if I learn one new thing a day in my age at 58, whereas a child uh, has to learn new things almost every hour, I think. Uh, the, Child will actually, uh, I think most children, like I, I remember my childhood, uh, uh, I would be happy and proud that I learned so many new things today. But, uh, so storytelling or when they use innovative approaches, the child learns more and the child feels very happy and proud after the child learns these things. So I'm all for innovative, though I can't suggest anything new. I once did... Uh, Book I used a flip flap uh, method to make pictures uh, move. So and in uh, uh, in the end, I uh, I also gave instructions how a child could do that. So this I learned in my fifth standard. So uh, I was hoping more children would learn a new thing from that. So that was the only innovative thing I remember I did. <laughs> Thank you so Glad much. that you mentioned uh, the cartoons. Uh, very interesting. I actually, the graphics novel, for example, that approach uh, can be very important and it, in science. And a right. uh, lot of science communicators I know uh, are now working on a graphics novel kind of a format in building up um, the narratives. Um, uh, communicating to the, and since you also mentioned f the 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 flip flop books, right? right they can be pop, pop up books. Uh, ah, right. about models, for example. So I have seen a book that came out of I think Bangalore Planetarium. Uh, director Dr. Shailaja made about Jantar Bantar, for example. So instead of talking about you know uh, two dimensional pictures of an actual three dimensional thing. They actually made a three-dimensional model of the Jantar Mantar. What better way to convey to a child? Right. You right. have it in front of you. So, right. Yeah. Thank you so much. So my next question to women, sir. Do you think uh, Leonardo da Vinci's drawings of helicopters and flying machines were science fiction of the term 15th century? Because right now we are making in real those were like used to be fantasy. Now we are doing it in, in real. 
So yeah, what's your thoughts on this? Yeah, I. This is a difficult question, really. So um, where they, I would say uh, yes. You're right. I mean, the, the, those are science fiction of um, uh, that era, uh, and not just flights of fantasy. I mean, he um, that that was the beginning of the what we call the modern science. So, and uh, he was in many ways a uh, uh, a scientist um and so when he thought about so science fiction means making stretching the uh, the borders of science and and, and, and speculating right um uh, and extend the borders of what is possible and what is not possible so when he drew these pictures of helicopters for example that's what he was doing what is possible and what is not and so in that sense uh, it was definitely uh, uh science fiction of that uh, time what what Jules Verne did later on uh it's of the same nature um yeah so i would agree with you on that okay thank you so much so since um ashok sir is an illustrator and your book the show as uh, the solar system in a verse as also an illustrator who is illustrated the book so my next question is based on illustration how does illustration aid in a better comprehension com comprehension of a story within a children? So I would like to start with Ashok sir first. Uh, great question, by the way. Um, I'm not stalling for time. I know. <laughs> uh, it's not like I know the answer, but I'll uh, I'll explore this. Um, it uh, the illustration the. Uh, uh, amount of illustrations or the percentage an illustration covers um, is inversely proportional <laughs> since it's all about science and all I'm trying to give it in scientific terms. Inversely proportional to the age of the reader. The older you get, the fewer illustrations you need or require. Uh, uh, for a little child who's just uh, uh, the books will have Big pictures. Most of the page will be uh, will be covered with a picture, and there could there be one line of text in the bottom. For example, my Gajapati Kulapati books are like that. So there will be a big picture, uh, and as the child grows older, and the child graduates from picture books to uh, early chapter books, uh, the uh, pictures will become smaller. The text area will grow, and then chapter books will be probably uh, one picture every chapter on an occasional picture in between. For an adult, an adult uh, or an intelligent child who is equal to an adult in readership, they don't require uh, pictures. Their imagination will do everything. Actually, sometimes uh, illustrations are intrusive, though it's against the good of my uh, profession or job to uh, discommend having <laughs> pictures. I, that, that's the truth. Uh, as a reader, I would I uh, I don't need pictures uh, unless unless I have, uh, uh, for example I hadn't seen a rhinoceros and I uh, though the words can uh, describe a rhino I know only to an extent I would, if it's like science or uh, uh, non fiction I would like to see pictures as illustrations too otherwise for fiction I don't need uh, pictures so it's inversely proportional the amount of pictures. Uh, I mean, uh, the uh, picture to text percentage. Uh, uh, illustrations for a child, a child learning something new for the first time, like even uh, from A to Apple, I mean, A for Apple, you know, the child will probably be looking at things for the first time, rhinoceros. So they, uh, and I hope it will um, uh, motivate the child to go on and look at a real rhino when seeing the picture and learning about the rhino. So illustrations help because a child itself is uh, coming to terms with language and struggling with it and learning it, uh, in every day. The child is getting better at language. So you need more pictures. Then the child is uh, really proficient. You don't. You need fewer pictures. Thank you, Ashok. Uh, Thank so, you. Uh, when you were working on your book. And you, uh, you must have worked with Illustrator as well because, you know, 
the the content you know, converting the content in illustration must be very daunting for you because you were doing for the first time i i think you talking about uh, you asking me right yeah yeah yes, yes. oh yes it, it was uh, it was uh, an interesting <laughs> i wouldn't say don't think it was very interesting experience for me uh, to work with the illustrator um but yes it, this is for the first time i have uh, done anything like this so are you planning to do the same thing in future oh yeah i mean like why not um uh, uh, uh i think illustrations are very important as uh, mr rajagopalan i mean uh, clearly said uh, i know of a child who once asked me how can there be a book without any illustration <laughs> how can you have a book without any illustration <laughs> i said yes i mean <laughs> we grown ups are weird people you know <laughs> yeah. um, so uh what um key message you would like to give to the audience since you have a science background and ashok sir is uh, totally from you know writing and illustration background so we will serve first message about what um message uh, that how how you know develop themselves in your field you are in a, uh, because you are feeling from science right so if we are looking to you know um, becoming aspiring um you know the making their career into the science or maybe in a science background maybe astrophysicist so any any advice you would like to give to them oh i mean uh, how to become an astrophysicist is a different uh, ball game uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah but uh, for example science communication i would actually uh, urge that you know all students and all our scientists we should we should try to communicate uh uh to the public and the most difficult uh, job is to communicate to uh, children i mean that's the most difficult thing and i think we should do that um uh it's not something we should leave it to um, others i mean i think scientists we should uh, take part um, in it and, and the science students these days actually i find that you no know, um, uh, it's very nice that a lot of science students doing what doing research they also do blogs they also do vlogs about science what they are doing to communicate to uh, people they put it up in youtube so um, some uh, and some of them write some of them draw graphic novels for example i know some some students okay. which uh, this is very nice I, i see this this trend yeah so ashok sir so what advice would you like to give to aspiring writer and illustrator <clears throat> uh and not just for writers i think uh, illustrators also have to be great readers you know from the basic thing like um, i have a, a, a green ball i mean the illustrator doesn't read that and draws a blue ball i mean from very uh, obvious things like that to uh, uh, when i uh, uh, when i'm doing pure illustration when i'm illustrating somebody else's book so i i read the book first and then uh, th- there is something called a writer's voice and tone and treatment so that gets into me so my illustrations have to reflect uh, that tone and voice you know if, if it's a very wacky humor kind of a thing so i i, I draw accordingly if it's uh, like very soft and uh, it's, uh, for very little children so i draw characters to suit that kind of so an illustrator has to be a great reader so mm-hmm. that's one message i have and uh, uh, i don't know what else to say one tip is uh, uh, you uh, uh, writing is like talking to someone so if you uh, it doesn't matter whether you are writing for adults or children so if you, uh, how would you talk to a child at least these days adults don't talk like those days you know they pat the child on the head and very patronizing he say uh, be a, a good boy listen to your parents and uh, uh, do them proud and all that i mean that's patronizing so uh, if you talk to a child like a peer or a slightly older child you know the uh, how would you Uh, tell the child the story so that is the same thing we are translating into words mm-hmm. so finding the voice or uh, writing to suit a certain age group is no problem 
you just imagine you are talking to a child so that's one tip i have for would be writers thank you so much ashok sir and i must say that i have a very pleasant experience talking to you guys because Same you here. have a different background you so and you also have a different background so it's it's been a very enlightening to the audience and for me as well so thank you so much for coming today and joining us and you yeah, are sharing a very different perspectives from a different background so thank you so much thank you again thank you thank you me. very much thank you beeman sir and thank you uh, mr rajagopal it's very nice to be here uh, thank with you thank you sir same yes have a good day bye you too